Hello and welcome to a new episode of Under 360 English. Today we are going to discuss about the best share market tips for beginners. We know that the past couple of years a lot of youngsters came into the market and they started to trade. Whether you are a trader or whether you are an investor who are going along with your conventional job, still unless you keep a few ground rules in your mind, it will be very difficult for you to get the benefits of stock market. So these basic tips, that's what today we are going to discuss. So stay tuned, keep watching. We know that even with limited or even without any knowledge of the stock market itself, a new investor can always look to invest in stock market. So it is much similar to uh, that of your playing cricket. When you are new to the crease, you should be always defensive in nature. Being aggressive can cost you your wicket. So the first job to become a successful investor is to know the basics of the market. Nowadays, all the details you need to know about trading and the related technical terms that can be easily learned from numerous websites available there on the internet. The first thing as a beginner, what you have to do is you should understand your risk profile and investment goals. Through your investment, you may be looking to fund your children's education or you may need money for your wedding that you are planning after three to five years. Additionally, you can invest your money to buy an asset that's a, like a home or a, a plot or anything or just to grow your money and to get a corpus after 20 or 30 years to prepare for your retirement. Any of these investment goals you can put forward. After this, you have to decide the time in which you want to achieve this goal. This time can be a short term time or a medium term or long term. In the case of retirement, that may be a long term goal. In the case of your marriage, that may be a short term goal. In the medium term, that may be your kids education. So if you want to earn higher returns in lesser time, you have to take higher risk because higher risk generates higher returns. So you have to define your goals and your risk appetite. That's the first parameter you have to keep in your mind. The second thing you have to decide whether you are going to invest or whether you are going to trade because this is the most common query of any new investor. But the answer for this is very simple. Trading requires regular attention and expertise. If you are a market expert and want to make trading in stock market your primary profession, you can always give it a try. Otherwise, it's better to start as an investor itself. As you gain experience and understand the market better, you can also start trying your luck in trading with limited capital first. You please try whether that is suitable to you or not. The next parameter of consideration is whether you are going to invest directly in shares or indirect share market investments like mutual funds. Which one you prefer? We know that the mutual funds are basically the entities that pool investors money and invest this money into the stock markets. For this purpose, they generally appoint a specialist usually called as fund manager. So a fund manager has to make investment decisions that reduce the risk and maximize returns. So if you are a new investor and don't have much time to spare for studying the stock market, you can invest your money in mutual funds. Otherwise, you can analyze the stock and create a very good portfolio and invest by yourself. The fourth point you have to take into consideration as a beginner is you have to choose stocks of established companies, large cap companies in general terms. So companies that have a very robust business and a great brand value are less likely to suffer huge loss, though they might not provide high returns in short term, but they are good investment for long term. Moreover, investing in such companies, large cap com companies, bigger companies are safer than investing in smaller companies. 
while you choose companies you can always search for data so the data of companies that give regular dividends and bonuses are easily available nowadays online even if you go to the exchange website like bsc india itself you will get these data so you can see the historical returns and market standing of the company and you will find that most investors keep long term positions in such companies so that helps them to grow their wealth consistently the fifth step you have to take as a beginner is you should start analyzing the stocks or mutual fund you are intent to invest so it's a, a never an advisable to depend entirely on the suggestions of market experts and that would be one of the best share market tips to follow if you really want to grow in so it's never advisable to depend all the time entirely on the suggestions of stock market experts and television channels etc etc so instead it's always a good idea to analyze the market by yourself study the market movements regularly watch business news channels read quality blogs or business dailies so this will help you to make informed decision and reduce the risk of losses once you start analyzing regularly you can get a hold of the market and identify the movements or even predict the market movements somewhat correctly this will increase your knowledge base as well as this will increase your confidence levels also the sixth thing you have to keep it in mind is as a beginner better you avoid derivatives derivatives means futures and options because derivative markets the futures and options they are very sophisticated sophisticated instruments that generally require a lot of expertise in stock market so you can uh, purchase much more stake in derivatives than stock for example with 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees if you go to buy stock or in equity you can buy stocks just for 1 and 1/2 lakh, lakh rupees but on the other hand if you get into fno 200% of margin the broker will provide so more number of stocks in derivatives in futures and option you can purchase so when profit comes that will be huge similarly when loss comes that may sometimes take away all your capital itself so it's always better to avoid derivatives until you get a hold of the market as well as the trade dynamics the seventh point is never make decisions emotionally you might have heard about the phrase market or investor sentiments that is used by experts to express the short term trends in stocks but it is not feasible in long run when the pandemic struck when the corona came experts predicted that the markets would fall because of the weak economy but the downside lasted only for a shorter span of time as of today the markets are at all time high somewhat it has been corrected but guided by the stimulus package of the government and uh, the vaccination drive etc etc you have a lot of reasons but uh, when compared to the global economy india's uh, earnings numbers are somewhat better but still we can't get isolated from global economy so india is also facing some sort of issues ultimately what we in india is expecting a bullish market in long run so always make your decisions based on the data based on the information not on your emotional grounds panic should not trigger your sales neither greed should not trigger your purchases the eighth thing is you should be able to identify the potential sectors i'm not talking about stocks but sectors some sectors are more likely to grow than others in certain cases for example during the early days of the pandemic while most other sectors were affected the pharma industry was working at full capacity so even though the markets moved down the pharma industry grew similarly you can identify sectors that have high growth potential and are the center of attraction at certain time this potential stock need not be always a potential bet throughout but from year to year time to time this will vary but with informed decisions you should be able to identify such potential sectors and invest stocks in that sector finally as a beginner you should always invest time to build a diversified portfolio and that way you can reduce the risk to a greater extent 
when you invest stocks from different different sectors you can reduce your risk all the sectors of an economy never suffer at the same time if one sector does not perform well other sectors can cover the that kind of losses this is the benefit of diversification of portfolio i hope uh, this episode was useful for you keep your feedbacks postured and that's all for now see you in the next episode till then bye from anup